Astronomers believe that they have discovered a new class of astronomical objects which has never been seen before. These objects appear in images taken using the Australian Kilometre Array Pathfinder Telescope. Let's find out what exactly these objects may or may not be. Circular features are well known in radio astronomical images and may represent spherical objects like supernova remnants, planetary nebula, circumstellar shells, a face on disks such as a protoplanetary nebula or a star forming galaxy. Some may even be caused by imaging artifacts caused by calibration errors. These new findings do not match any of these known circular radio images. Altogether they only discovered four of these objects so they appear to be very rare and this connected with a low surface brightness may also explain why they were not discovered in earlier radio surveys. None of them have any obvious optical, infrared or x-ray counterparts to the diffuse emissions, although in two cases there is an optical galaxy near the centre of the radio emission. They dubbed these objects Odd Radio Circles or ORCs for short. So the first one that they identified had a radio source that was nearly circular. It had an edge brightened filled morphology with brighter spots around its periphery. And when we overlay the radio image with an optical image, there appear to be no optical emissions that correspond to the ring. On the southern edge of the ring is a bright radio source which is associated with a galaxy. This is probably a star forming galaxy. It may be possible that this galaxy is unrelated to the ring, but the spectral emissions match that of the rest of the ring. At the centre of the ring is a faint optical object with no detectable radio emissions and may possibly be a galaxy. One arc minute to the southeast of the radio source is a 16th magnitude galaxy which is elongated north-south in the optical image and also the same appears in the radio image. This may well be an edge-on spiral galaxy and appears to be unconnected to the central ring. In the second one that they identified, this had a nearly circular edge brightened filled morphology with brighter spots around its periphery. To the northeast of ORC2 is a pair of strong radio components and may be part of a double lobed radio source which is located near a galaxy. Within the eastern limb is a compact radio source which coincides with an edge on galaxy. Immediately to the east of ORC2 appears the third one and this is another faint circular patch. It is a much fainter example but is puzzling as it is so close to ORC2 and it may well be related to ORC2. In the fourth one this again is very similar to the previous three but it differs in having a central radio continuum source and this central source is coincident with a red galaxy. All four have similar properties. They have strong circular symmetry, they have a diameter of about one arc minute, and they have a steep spectral index. They are also all high in their galactic latitude. So what are the possible explanations for these objects? Well, the first is imaging artifact. Both ORC 1 and 2 were clearly imaged with two different telescopes at different times with different processing software and all ORCs have been detected by more than one telescope. This is therefore an unlikely explanation. Supernova remnant. The morphology between the ORCs and supernova remnants is remarkably similar. However, there are many more supernova remnants, so we should be seeing many more of these than we actually do. The scientists therefore rule out this as being the cause for these ORCs. Galactic Planetary Nebula These can also appear as diffuse disks of radio emissions, however the radio spectral index of known planetary nebula do not match with the ORC and there should be many more of these so the scientists also use the same argument as the supernova remnants to rule out this explanation. A lobe from a double lobe radio galaxy side on view. Now these galaxies form lobes at either end and these can become near circular but it is an unlikely explanation because of the following reasons. The ORCs are strikingly circular and edge brightened which is not seen in double lobed radio galaxies. While ORC 2 and 3 could conceivably be a double radio lobe source, 
there is no corresponding lobe for ORC1 and 4. For ORC2 and 3, there is no sign of a central optical or radio host source between the two lobes. The galaxy at the centre of ORC2 is a spiral, which rarely hosts a double-lobed radio source. For ORC2 and 3, the brightness of the two lobes is quite different, in which case we would expect there to be a distinct difference in the shape between these two lobes if the lobes were caused by a double-lobe radio galaxy, but they have identical size and shape. Lobes from a double radio galaxy viewed end-on. Now this is similar to before, but now we are looking down the jet at one of the lobes. And again here, the end-on lobe can appear as a circular object. If the central source was processing, then that central spot could, in principle, be circular, although this has never been observed. The problem is that this would require a high blue optical counterpart, which is not observed in the case of ORC 2 and 3. And we would also expect the central radio emission to be brighter than the fainter halo, which again is not what is observed in any of these cases. The physical size of these also puts a limit on how far away they are. Sadly, no redshift data is currently available for any of these objects. If these were at a redshift between 0.4 and 1, then the size would be of the order of 500 kiloparsecs, which is more than one order of magnitude greater than is observed for other radio galaxies. Another possibility they suggest is that the radio galaxy can leave behind a blob of plasma, which can then form a vortex ring if it encounters a shock wave. This is a bit similar to NGC 1265. They go on to list further options that they rule out, which include a bent tail radio galaxy, Einstein rings, galaxy cluster halos, and galactic wind termination shock. But effectively, they rule all of them out and leave it open as something that might well be a new class of object that has never been observed before. So what do I make of these findings? The fact that they are near circular is very interesting, and also coupled with that, that the size of them, the fact that they are one arc minute across, potentially makes them quite a large structure, or a structure that is much closer to us. Just jumping back to the comparison to NGC 1265 reminds me very much of Art's work on peculiar galaxies, and the fact that we really do not understand them particularly well. And I think studying these sorts of strange galaxies may well provide clues that is currently being overlooked in many different camps. Do these mysterious rings point to some other structure that we do not normally see? Are they a different stage of galactic evolution never seen before? If the universe is indeed fractal, then are there examples of these shapes being created on a smaller scale? The question then would be, why is it that they appear so rare? As always, be brave, be curious, the truth is waiting for us. Until next time.